Today, we're supposed to, to um, talk about uh, the email etiquette, but I went, I went ahead and included more than email, just a little of communication. Communication is quite wide, but because um, we are doing the, uh, the email, I thought it wise to also include other elements of communication. Topic was on email communication, but I went ahead to include some other elements of communication, which will help you as an individual as you move forward in, the, in your career, both in business and also in employment. So for this presentation, we'll be talking about the essential business communication skills. Communication basically is uh, encompasses a few elements. Communication is a process. And even right now in this meeting, we are communicating. Um, it starts from the sender. So the sender encodes all puts down the message. Then after the sender encodes the message, then sends the message to a receiver. The receiver, once the receiver receives the message, they decode that message. Decoding means they understand and they, they are able now to give feedback. So communication comes in two ways. We have the face-to-face -face communication, which includes the oral and the audiovisual. Oral is just like the way now I am speaking. On your visual is when I am using sign, all that's out of visual. Then we have the other category of communication, which is written communication, which includes letters, emails, and memos, and other things like reports. So for today, we will be talking about written communication. So for recent communication, you communicate uh, for this, because this is for youth, I understand from rehab. So, and for youth, I know you are looking for jobs, you are applying for, for tenders, for those who have, uh, who, who, who wants to join the tender, the tender, all the business community. And when one is looking for a job, or even internship, or even applying for a tender, it is imperative that you apply good communication. So you need these skills to be able to convince, to convince your receiver that you are the right person. You are the right person to get that tender. You are the right person to get that position. And one way in which the youth find themselves uh, uh, messing is when they are putting a request and they use the wrong language. And this request, uh, just for this, the three things that I've mentioned. So before you write that application letter, you need to take into consideration some key elements that you will consider. And these key elements will enable you to convince your receiver that you are the right person, okay? So the first thing you need to do is to identify your audience. In this case, your audience is the reader. Your audience is the CEO of that company you want to get a tender. Your audience is the HR of that company you're looking for work. Your audience is even uh, that CEO that you are trying to communicate a service that you need from that office. So you will need to address your email or your letter to the right office holder. And for example, uh, if you are writing to Safaricom, if you are writing to Safaricom, 
You know, with Safaricom, people were used to Michael Joseph a lot. So first of all, because you used to hear about Michael Joseph, and maybe it has stuck in your mind that Michael Joseph is the CEO of Safaricom. It is always good for you to go to the internet and check who the current CEO is. So you find it is Mr. Ndengo. So if you write a letter in 2022, to Mr. Michael Joseph, it might not be acted upon. Given Mr. Ndewa came in some two years or a year ago, I think two years ago. So ensure you also check the, 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 the right title for the CEO or the executive or the person you are writing to. For example, you are writing to a, a, a principal secretary for those who are try, writing letters to PSs. Uh, by and by, a PS may have joined the ministry when they are, for example, I'll give an example of Miss Mary Kemonye, PS for public service. But by and by, she has gained an, uh, a decoration called um, CBS. So at times when you omit that CBS, this person feels like, Hi, this, this one, I, 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 CBS, that is my title. And, you know, there is that first um, impression when you write. So they take and say, this person is not even getting my decoration right. So it's always good for you to check the, all those things, the titles and the decoration. So at times we find that we wrote a letter. We were like, when people are applying for jobs, I know this a time I was also applying for jobs and I was applying to many institutions. So you find that I had written a job, a, 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 an application letter to Kefri. So I also now hear, oh, uh, Carlo as a position. So you find that maybe you're using the same letter. You just change the names. So at times some people forget that. And when they hear this a position and it has a short notice, they don't change those particulars. They just send through email a letter and raise to an executive of another institution, which now brings in the issue of uh, it may be rejected. And then maybe you hand all the right qualifications for this position. But because you wrote to the wrong information, you sent the wrong letter, it, 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 it is returned all, it is thrown away. So if the previous letter, it was Mr. John Musaki, CEO Kenya Nance, now the new application, yeah, you now change, ensure you change all the details. If it was a minister, don't just change from John and write Miriam. Ensure there is miss, just delete everything. Delete all the, 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 uh, the whole address and address it afresh. So uh, just continuing about letters, formal letters, ensure, ensure that when you are writing a formal letter, you write what your audience needs. Do not go putting so much information. Actually, executives do not have that much time to read a lot of information. And remember, a lot of information, uh, when, you, when you give a lot of information, which is not necessary, it might put off the reader and the reader will set your letter aside because this person has a lot of things that they are doing. So for example, a company has advertised for the position of IT officer. You don't need to put as much details as how you are excellent in volleyball. I know some of you have those certificates for volleyball, uh, netball, football in high school. You don't need to put that in the letter. Because remember, IT and football, there is no connection. The football is for you, you not, it will not be um, of, of, of help to the institution where you are applying. And the person will be checklisting on what they require and what you have provided. So try to link the skills that we have with the needs of a prospective employer. All, even with the supplies, if you are looking for, uh, for, for, for a tender and you are doing that, um, Proposal, write what is what is necessary, not too much of it. So uh, 
how do you now put up that formal letter? In a formal letter, after the addresses which you've spoken about, then you have the you have the subject line. The first paragraph basically it usually uh, it usually provides information referring to the subject matter. It is introducing the letter, the content of the letter. And I have given thou an example that if it is an advertisement, you are you are you are applying for a job as ICT officer. Then you'll just mention your advertisement for ICT officer position in the Daily Nation of 10th January 2022 refers. Now you have already introduced what you are looking for. You've already introduced the, the letter. Then the, the, the middle, um, if it is now for those who are supplying, then you mention the issue of the supply and that you are expressing your interest. Then we then um in the middle now, in the main. In the main um, uh, paragraphs of the letter is now where you give your details, what you have, and all that, and now you end. Now, in that your letter, you need to be wary of the tone that you use and also the language. Guard against using rude language in your official letters because rude language puts off that reader. And it may minimize the chances of Warinda um, giving you a chance. So it's because the moment they get to where the, the language isn't good, what they do, they usually set it aside. Because remember, there are so many people who have also sent these letters. Yeah. And I'll give an example of some of the emails that I've ever seen, or letters I've ever seen. Someone was applying for for for. So I think it was internship. And you see this, this is what the person wrote, that I am currently a student XYZ university waiting for graduation. So are you going to give me that job I saw in the papers? Reply, please. This was an email. I've ever received that email. Yes, somebody did. So looking at this, you don't even feel like giving this person um, a chance. First of all, this tells you this person is begging, uh, but is using this language. What if when I give this person this job, how will he treat my customers? That is the question I ask myself. But better, I have given a sample of how this student could have put her um, request across that I completed Bachelor of Economics at XYZ University and currently looking for a suitable position as I wait for graduation. I saw an advert on your website which suits me and would appreciate if you could consider me for that position. Kindly let me know if you have internship openings in case this is not possible. The second, the, this second student is very convincing. It shows the, the person who has respect and you even feel like if there is a position, you'd want to give this person. You can see, you feel that this person will be able to treat your customers in the right manner. That let a letter should have a personal touch. When it has a personal touch, the audience or the reader gets it very is very receptive to wherever you are, put you've put in your letter. Your response will be highly appreciated to pave way for a discussion. Okay. That sentence, your response will be highly appreciated to pave way for a discussion. It does not have the personal touch. Your response. But better, I would appreciate your response and look forward to our discussion. This sounds better. It sounds better. So the subject matter, as I mentioned, it's supposed to be clear and catchy. Don't just drop anything. Ask yourself, what is the, the gist of this letter? Whatever you want to communicate, put it there in the subject line. The subject line 
when people are when 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 there's a, you are writing to an office which has a lot of work and all few staff and the work is much, the subject line will save you. It will save you from these documents going to the wrong hands, all being treated uh, in a casual manner. For example, when there is an advertisement and there in your subject line, you just write job application and the advertisement is for so many positions. You will literally be second assigned so that it will be looked at later to find out inside what you are applying for. Because if the employer uh, had advertised for 10 or 15 or 30 positions and you write real job application, how will it be classified? Given that the best practice is that when, when um, applications for job are received, they look at this subject line and sort letters based on the position applied for. Writing like this, job application, it may lead to your application being put in the wrong category and you will be left out of the short listing. For example, there is a job for position of ICT officer. Forgive me, I'm using just this one so that I'm consistent. And um, someone has a letter job application as the subject line. Then, inside, as they are starting, they start by saying how uh, uh, how they started they, they started counseling. So the person who is opening the letter is counseling as the first thing. They, he will pick that letter, and if there was no counseling position, put it aside. aside. Or if there was a counseling position, put it on the side of a counseling. Yet the person was applying for ICT officer because of how the letter, how the, the letter was addressed, and also what was catchy. So Official letters, the salutations. For official letters, we always have salutations. And salu the salutations, I have seen um, uh, people writing, hello, executive, hello, CEO. This is an official way of addressing a formal official letter. Ensure you write, dear sir or dear madam, if you do not know the name of that person. Even when you are signing off your letters, avoid writing best regards at the bottom. Kind regards, these are, these are for emails. Kind regards, best regards. Best regards is for emails where the, it is an official or you have some cordial relations with the person you are writing to. Kind regards is okay for official emails. Regan is also okay. It is official for email, but not for formal letters. So for formal letters, you'll be signing off as yours faithfully when addressing a senior officer. So these are the parts of an official letter, as I had mentioned, the sender's address, then you go to the date, you go to the name and address of the receiver, you go to the salutations, that is the dear sir, dear madam, for the subject heading, which we say that it may be, it must be capturing the, uh, the essence of the letter. Then the body of the letter, complementary clause, which I've just mentioned, uh, the signature, and then the name of the sender. So in brief, in, in summary, this is what entailed a formal letter. So now, so this, these are the essential elements of a letter. Clarity, it must be clear. Ensure that whatever you've put there is clear. The other person can be able, it's not ambiguous, it's clear, it's clear. Completeness, completeness, what I mean is that what the sentence should be, sentences should be complete. At times you find that you are writing a letter and then you are distracted, and then you continue with another sentence and you don't you leave uh, you know things hanging. Ensure you don't leave things hanging in an official letter. Conciseness, it should be concise. What are you looking for? Talk about what you are looking for. 
courteous, I talked about the language, convincing and try is convincing to the other person who is the reader. So now we go to the email etiquette. As you may be aware, currently email is the in thing. After the COVID came, uh, we had people uh, sent home and uh, to work from home. We had even uh, uh, companies telling people now where you could now uh, transact basically that you now be using online or emails. Like when you require something, you just send an email and then you. Okay, so basically, we have written more emails between 2020 and now, more than we wrote in the, in the last five years. I've not done any research, but I think so, because personally, I've done more emails than I did in the last five years. So uh, now that we know email is the, is the way to go, uh, it is important for us to observe uh, some basic, basic email etiquette. Because when you are writing an email, it's just like as if you were speaking to a someone, it's, it's, it's as if you're writing to, some, to someone through the letters, yeah, so you consider it. Now, for emails, uh, you find that some people are tend to write long emails. When you have a lot of information to convey, it is always good to keep your emails short and to the point. Where the information is too much, put it as an attachment. So in the email, you put a summary of what you want, but then have an attachment where you put all the other information. So that is etiquette in regards to email, do not write long emails. Secondly, write a clear subject matter in the email. A lot of people, a lot of people um, do not, um, you know, write the uh, subject matter, which is even related to the email. Because for example, you will see um, maybe at one time you wrote to Helen an email and the subject matter was on, um, was on a, for example, a renewal of license. So today you want to write to Helen about a matter to do with the, with the tender. So what to do, because you don't want uh, to go looking for her, email, you, you search for that long old email. You retrieve an old email, write new information without changing the subject. So the moment that information, that email reaches to Helen and then she sees application for license and maybe she has the Helen has been moved from licensing to HR or to, or to procurement, of course that email will not be read. It might be ignored. Because that person, maybe their duty or what they are doing that day is collecting proposals for procurement. Now you write with that own subject matter then of licensing. You see, that's how now your email will be the last to be read. Those are the, the emails which are usually blue, blue. We read them later when we are not busy. It happens to so many things. So ensure for every email, you write a clear subject matter so that the person or the reader is able to at a glance know what you are looking for. Then do not write niceties in an official email. For example, a fan may be receiving email says, hello, Helen dear. This is very informal, very, very informal. Better say just start the email by dear Miss Helen. This is the formal way. People have a, a lot of informal, we have a lot we, we can say here, but when it comes to formal emails, this is 
the recommended way of salutation in an email. Then always have a salutation for your email. Do not just, when you just write an email without saluting the person you are writing the email to, it looks like dumping. It's like picking a piece of paper and dumping it. And you just may throw it. Yeah, you just draw it for the other person to read. Always have a salutation, unless if you are maybe responding to a conversation which you are having with someone. Failure to have a salutation makes your email cold. And of course, no one likes cold emails. Then choose your ones carefully and thoughtful. Thoughtfully, what I mean is that think about how the ones you have used in your email, how they will be um, interpreted by the other person. And also try to think that suppose whatever you've written is to leak in the social media or the cyberspace, how would you feel? So if you write a rude email and that rude email is put across to KOT, how will KOT react? Just ask yourself that. Then there's the issue of the email address. When we are in colleges and universities, yeah, we have those uh, chike chike names that we use. And at times we go further to rename our email addresses. I've ever received some email addresses, actually this sweetp at hotmail.com. When you are sending to official email platforms where there are domains, this one, this one is usually pushed to spam mail because most of the times it's seen like an obscene email. And even for me, if I open an email and I see sweet P, I delete immediately because I don't know what is in that email. I tend to think this email could be a phishing, a, a spam mail or even those are some um, obscene emails that are sent by certain people with um, a suspicious links. Loose lips, drinking killers, I've seen these ones. When you rename, when you are you when you are writing official email, and it is always advisable to have your name professionally. Have your name as the name of your address. If you want to have an email for your social media, then open a separate email with such names, yeah? For the social media or for your social life. But for, for communication, for official communication, please stick to your name so that the receiver of your email is able to confidently open your email, not thinking, that you may be a suspicious, suspicious person. Then check on spelling and grammar. Always check for spelling before touching the send button. Just run through what you've written. Remember we said the email should be short. So just run through your two paragraphs and done. Then click send after you are sure the spelling is okay and the grammar is okay. Then ensure the subject matter corresponds with the content, as I mentioned. Don't write a subject matter which is different from the email content. So there are events when you have attachments, like when you have so many, and, for, and like applying for jobs, you surely have attachments. You attach CV, you attach uh, your um, application letter, you attach a form in case where you are told to fill a form, you attach your certificate. But what I would say is that when you have many attachments, ensure that you label them 
label them. If it is job, job application form, write as such. If it is CV, write as such. If it is a de 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 degree in degree certificate, write it. So that even the person opening yeah, is able to see that you are an, an ordinary person. If we are sending uh, documents, proposals, requesting for registration as a supplier, ensure you write, name the proposal, name the AGPO. It's called that AGPO certificate, name it, name it. Now, um, at times you find that we are conversing with people and you are copied in an email among other people. You are under CC, ensure you check who you are there. The email says, dear Miss Asunta, but you are in CC. So if I say I am CC, I don't have to reply to all. If I need to tell the sender something that I have received, I only send to the sender, not reply to all when you are in CC. That is etiquette. The email is not meant for you. The email is meant to the person addressed. You are in CC for your information. Okay. Then again, never forward an email which had been forwarded to another organization without customizing it. Because the recipient will not take it kindly that the email was even addressed to somebody else, then you, you forwarded. And especially for job applicants, they tend to do that a lot. Then never write or respond to an email, official email when you are angry. Wait until you are calm because the language you will use might be disadvantageous to you. And especially if you are on the other side of the shoe, if you are the one seeking something, and you are responding angrily, then you put off the service provider. So that is all for um, email etiquette. Uh, but I want also, I went ahead and put out some, some just a few things about how, uh, given that you are used, about office etiquette, just a few as a customer. So etiquette are manners, all behaviors that are established and acceptable and required in a society or a profession. So the manners that we have, we have the hygiene manners, which are taught early age by our parents and their courtesy manners, which is the ability to put others' interests before oneself. They are also taught, or they are also taught as we grow up so when you are visiting offices, I know you will be visiting offices, offices to look for all these things, internship, jobs, tenders, or even other services. It is always important to look official because first impressions last long. So the way you present yourself, the person who sees you for the first time will form an opinion about you. I know these are takeaways. So um, just to mention the dressing, ensure you are smart, the smart casual. Don't be skimpily dressed if you are seeking services. And especially from the government offices. I've been in government for long, for many years. In government offices, don't go skimpily dressed. Otherwise, people will avoid you. Avoid you. Or even wearing ragged, ripped jeans, unless the office you are visiting is in the entertainment entertainment uh, segment. All the art galleries and such, no one will, that, that one, it is okay. Then when you are applying male perfume, ensure you use male perfume. That is what is dictated by office etiquette. The, a perfume that doesn't irritate other office visitors and staff. Be well groomed, of course. If you have drained rocks, don't leave them to look like they are dead. Ensure you have them retouched here and there, we washed, and uh, they are neat. Eh? The way you would go for a date, ensure you also, at least they are clean, the hair is 
clean and uh, maintain good grooming and good hygiene. Good hygiene. When you are starting uh, starting the work, people don't walk. You walk, you don't drive. I also started walking, but I always had that uh, piece of cloth, which I had so that once I reach the gate, I would wipe my shoes or get a, a, a washroom. You wipe your shoes, you are okay. In fact, people would think that you walked. You look like you came driving. So it's just a tip I'm giving. It's not written anywhere. And now I'll also mention about when you go to those offices and you are dissatisfied with their services. First of all, be calm and recollected. When dealing with an irritating staff, you find a staff who is irritating. Just be calm. Because you may start engaging this staff. And um, you know, you see words once once leave your mouth, they never get back. You may utter some words which are picked by someone who is as around around you. And most of the time, when we are angry and we are shouting, you attract people. But for you, you don't seem to see those people. You don't seem to see them, but they are all focusing on you. You never know who might then avoid dramatizing or shouting when presenting a complaint. Just present a co your complaint in a cautious, in a courteous language so that even after the complaint is undressed, you will have a cordial relation with that office. If you supplied goods and um, you are not paid on time, don't go shouting and calling the line staff names. Yeah, because they might not consider you. Know, just go and present your complaints formally. Ask about how the complaints are done there. Put down. And once it is dissolved, they will say, ah, this one that will give you a chance again. I have seen people missing out on other procurements because they were too harsh to the staff. And they just say, I don't want to deal with that one with their attitude. So in summary, now we are coming to the end of the presentation. So in summary, um, before you send anything, be it an official letter, be it a, an email, just ask yourself, read it and ask yourself if you are the receiver, how would you feel? So you are checking on the language and their pattern of touch. Then ask yourself whether you understand the content. Now you are checking on whether you are being, you are being precise and whether you are being uh, clear, the clarity. Then ask yourself if the communication well, is warm or harsh. Suppose it is you receiving that communication. The other point is read your correspondence or email twice before sending. Simplicity, assume the reader is late. You are coming from university. You are being taught by those professors. You are using all those big terms. Please don't put those terms in official letters. We never know who is receiving this one. And they might show like you are trying to brag and they say, ah, this one, so full of themselves. And sincerity, be truthful. Be truthful when you are writing, don't lie. Never send a letter written in. Anger is the last point. And thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Helen. Uh, do we have any questions? Thank you for the good presentation. My question, my first question is, is it okay to use uh, maybe a short form of your name for an email? For example, my name is Susan Watitwa. So my email, for instance, is S-U-E, that is the short form for Susan, which is Sue, and then my second name, Sue Watitwa. How official is that? And my second question, should we use Times New Roman or should we use is it called area and uh, to which font kindly? Thank you. Okay, thank you, Susan. I'll answer your question. The first one, using uh, the shortcut of uh, the short form of where 
we want to sue, sue so what it was is very okay. Or so, sue, so is a name. It's just a name which you have shortened. It's no problem. The problem is those lewd names. Okay. Then uh, in regard to the font and all that, there is no specified font. Use whatever, whichever font that you like, because it is you, it is not the other organization. Thank you. But then should it be in Times New Roman or Arial, any preferred style for writing? No, it is you. It is your branding as Sue. What is your branding as Sue? Like for me, my branding is, is Bookman. It is me. So no one tells you write this. Mm -mm. It is you. What you what you, you 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 want? What is your brand? Okay. Thank you. I think there was a question in the chat uh, as to whether to use high or dear. So which one is okay? As I mentioned, high reserve high for your peers and friends and of in uh, an official. For official use, dear so and so, dear sir, dear madam, dear Miss Helen, dear Mr. Omala, use that. Eh? Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Rebecca Nafula. Uh, I have a question. First of all, thank you so much for the most needed insight. I've learned so much from this uh, webinar. So my question is, uh, in most applications, uh, you gave an example of uh, it being listed in the newspaper. So you'd see that it's been listed, whatever um, you know, qualification one person should have. So is it wrong to kind of you know, tailor made yourself and basically kind of copy paste? See, in most applications, uh, they will list out a list of things that they require for a person to have, you know. So I was, I'm asking, is it okay for someone to kind of copy paste the requirements and basically put them there as one of the things that they do have, like most of the things? I don't know if you, you, you're getting it. So re put them in the application letter? Yes, yes, that would, um, okay, like you said, you, they needed someone who has this particular uh, uh, qualities, you know, mm -hmm. language, uh, be it the level of education, mm -hmm. location where they're located and whatnot. Is it okay to kind of copy paste and kind of answer those as like answer in terms of questions? I don't know. Um, yeah. No, that's the no, 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 no. It's not right. Eh? Actually, mm -hmm. you have the application letter. Application letter, you're putting up, you put up an application, application for these, then you write who you are. I am so and so, you are age. Just I am in, in a prose form, one paragraph, eh? which is the sec paragraph number two. Paragraph number one, you refer to the advertisement. Paragraph number two is when we are saying, I wish to apply for this position. I have this, this um, these ears. I have this and this and this in prose form. Yeah. And I have this experience. That paragraph you will be mentioning about attached here with are uh, then also in a prose form. Eh? Don't list like answers. Then for 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 KRA, those things, eh? You, you you call them, you just put and the the account what and clearances and relevant clearances. If it is for testimony, you say it is testimonials. You don't go there writing uh you letter from which company, letter from which company, we don't do that in the letter. So the issue of skill, you write them in your CV. Okay. Those nitty-gritties will come in your CV, not in the letter. In the letter is introducing these other things that you are attaching. I hope I've answered your question. Uh, yes, you have. And then another question, is there a format on how we should put attachments, e.g., because most, most will start with, you have to put a, a cover letter. Is it okay to start with a cover letter and then your CV and then the other things? Or we can just do as one pleases in terms of okay, attachments. For the sake, okay, for the sake of uh, orderliness, eh, when you apply logic, it tells you application letter is the first because it is the one which is what? Introducing you. If the institution had given you a form to, to fill, like PSC, JSC, you have those forms to fill. Then the form will be number two. Actually, no, 
the application letter first. Number two will be uh, your ID, showing it is you. Then number three will be that form, duly filled form. Then in that form, you will see how they have arranged. How they have arranged is how you arrange your other document. It's not written anywhere, but that is about my the way I, I, I interpret and the logic and how I've seen even at H, I've worked in the HR, so I, how we used to arrange them when we are uh, receiving applications. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Arnold Konge from Champions for SDGs. And uh, I thank you for the great presentation you've made. I'd like to ask a question. Probably you tackled it, maybe I missed it, but I'd like to seek clarity on how to dress when going to uh, say a job interview or a formal setting. Um, because sometimes there could be certain roles that do not really require you to be formal. So is there a standard way of someone to dress, for example, you are you are formal, you need to wear a tie and uh, have a coat, or if you are informal, you need to wear something like a sweater or a t-shirt. Yeah, that is the question. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Arnold, for that question. Uh, I only talk about the dressing when going to the office. So for interviews, for interviews, dress formal. Always dress formal. And uh, colors, let me mention dark colors. Eh? Formal dark colors for a suit. So if it's a suit, navy blue, there are colors which are navy blue, gray, that line of dark colors, it's usually comes out well. You may also have a tie. And basically, like if we're applying for a, here for a position which requires you, so if we're, if we're going to, 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 to meet, to be meeting uh, high profile clients, of course. Show your pro prospective employer that you know how to dress. Yeah. Don't come with um, uh, those bright, bright colors. So it's usually dark colors and uh, preferably formal suits. For ladies, you can have dresses, but not their, what are they called? You see those dresses which have. Um, uh, they are not straight at the bottom, but they go like they are dancing. Yeah? Avoid those ones. All skip the dresses. Then dresses for ladies, ensure they are not above your knees. If you are going to a public office to, to, for an interview, avoid above the knees. Public service interviews, as in when I mean, what I mean by public service interviews is the government. Eh? The government avoid avoid uh, those uh, uh, dresses or skirts which are above above the knee. Yes, I think there's uh, another question in the chat. Uh, so, when applying for a job, is it okay to put the application in the body of the email or in the attachment? You see, an application letter is just letter, which if we are sending my email, it will be an attachment. So in the email, you'll be just mentioning, kindly find attached my application letter for this position and my certificate. But if it is the email, the application letter is part of the attachment. If it is hand copy, then the application letter is what is on top. It is what is introducing everything else. Yeah, I just want to thank you for the wonderful session. I think uh, personally, I learned a lot. Um, even the issue of email address, I think most uh, people do not know like how official uh, your email uh, matters. Um, so that was really insightful. Thank you.